joining me from a very sunny studio. It's currently nearly six o'clock in the evening and <laughs> I don't usually start my videos in the evening but I've had a busy day and I've really wanted to start this video and I just haven't found time until now. So now that the days are a bit longer I thought why don't we just start in the evening and we'll do a little bit of evening sewing but I'm really excited for today's project because it's a really easy one that you guys at home can play around with. Um, I'm going to make some jersey tops. As you can tell, I live in jersey tops. <laughs> I think pretty much all of my videos I'm wearing a tight jersey top. This just seems to be something I feel really comfortable in and I think looks good. And I wear a lot of jeans as well so I think they go really well with jeans. And I've always been put off making anything in jersey because knitted fabric just is never anything I really learnt how to work with um, but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on how to work with it and it's actually not too bad you just need patience and to not I don't know you just have to be very delicate in your work um, especially when you're cutting things out you just have to really make sure things are like properly flat nothing's stretched anywhere and then once it's all cut out, it literally takes like a few minutes to put everything together. So it's quite fun because it does come together very quickly. So I'm going to show you how I make a really simple top. And then I might have a go at adding a facing, not facing, a binding around the neck. But to be honest, I kind of want the look of a raw edge anyway. That's what I'm after. I did make one a few months back and posted it on my Instagram um, but that was like a high neck one and that went really well I didn't even twirl it or anything um, so I shall show you my method of how I do them and I also really want to make some pyjama bottoms or like just general lounge pants trousers let me show you the jersey fabrics I've got and the plans I have for them I have quite the stack <laughs> I'm not sure how this has happened. <laughs> so this one, this one I've had for the longest time. It's just a jersey that it's kind of like that thermally fabric. And then I also have some of this gorgeous striped jersey. This is organic cotton. Oh, it just feels amazing. I wonder what I should make in this. I think a t-shirt would look quite cute in this actually, so maybe I'll do a t-shirt in that. I kind of want to make trousers that I could actually wear out of the house and that don't look too pyjama-like. Could make some leggings as well. Then I have a load of this polka dot, which is one of my faves. It's so, so soft. Again, it's organic cotton and I got it in Copenhagen. I'm also seeing my sister next week and I'm tempted to try and make something for her little baby because she's turning one um, and she lives in like little leggings so maybe I could make some mini leggings and a mini top. Um, I also have some of this ribbing which I could use and then I have this really pretty ditzy floral again in that sort of thermally fabric uh, and then the last one I have is some more stripey, but this one is brown. And, you know, I love a brown. So I'm definitely going to make some tops in this one. So those are all of the fabrics. Now let me show you how I draft the pattern using a top I already have. So you guys could definitely do this at home. This is some more new fabric I got today. <laughs> Forever buying fabric. I also got a load of this the other day, I forgot about that, which is just like a really natural cotton jersey and that just feels really really nice. Basically once I've got the pattern there is no stopping me, I am going to be making endless jersey tops. <laughs> so it's super simple to create the pattern, all you need is a top, a jersey top that already fits you, um, that you like. And then you actually only need to do half, half of the shirt. So I'm then going to draw 
a straight line down to be our centre front. And then I'm going to square that off at the bottom at a 90 degree angle. So that's what it should be looking like so far. I'll insert a little video showing you that that's the centre front and then the right angle. And now we're going to get our top, place it on top and we're going to fold it in half and lay it flat. And I want to add a bit more length to the top so I'm just going to bring it up slightly. And you're just going to flatten that top as well as you can. And then all we're going to do is trace around the outside shape of the top. And then while you're there, you can also trace the top. And you're going to want to mark where the sleeve starts and finishes. Flatten the sleeve and then again just trace all the way around. I like to add a tiny bit more to it. But I quite like to add a bit more length because as you can see tops are always very short on me. So this is the main reason why I want to make these tops to be honest. I shouldn't have made that <laughs> because I then need to sort of trace the line of this shoulder seam. Okay, then just go ahead and if you have a pattern master, just neaten up those lines a bit. This top line of the sleeve will need to be completely straight. The other one can be curved slightly, but that's going to be cut on the fold. So we need that to be straight because we can't have a curvy fold. <laughs> and then at the end of the sleeve, you're going to want to square it off at a 90 degree angle with the fold line, so the top line. So there we go. Square that off like that. And now you have your sleeve. Now we're going to trace the pattern off. And you don't want to just cut this pattern out because this is called your master pattern. And any changes we want to make, we can then go back to it and know exactly where to change them and then trace it off from there again. So I don't like putting fabric on the fold very much, so I'm going to trace mine and reflect it so that I don't need the fold. I'm just going to film on my phone and show you what I've done to the changes. So I've decided that I want to have it quite flat across the front. This was the original shape of the front neckline and you can just about see the back neckline there. But I've decided to take a little bit of the shoulder seam out, just make it a bit shorter. And then I'm gonna do it straight across in a 90 degree angle with the centre front. And I wanna see how that looks. <laughs> so we'll try that. And we need to add one centimetre seam allowance all over. So then, so that I don't have to fold the jersey, because it's quite a tricky fabric to fold and make it look really neat, I fold the pattern paper instead that I've traced. And I just fold it down that centre front line you don't need seam allowance in the centre front. You can actually pin your pattern together so that it's even on both sides and you don't accidentally move it. And that just takes out some of the stress of having to line up your pattern piece on the fabric on the fold. And there we have it, that's our front piece done. And now I just need to go and trace off the sleeve. I'm back from having dinner, now I'm going to trace off the sleeve. So exactly as before, I'm just going to leave some space for the fold so I can double it over.
So here we have the bodice piece and the back piece. I'm just keeping the front and back bodice the same because I'm lazy. <laughs> and it's also kind of the look I'm going for. I think I'm going to make one up in this nice natural looking jersey to start with and then we can see what the fit's like before I use any of my really nice organic cottons. I actually think this is organic cotton it said on the label. It's, this is a really good fabric shop that I found recently. Well, I've known it's been around for a while, but it's a little bit further than where I'm from. Um, and it's called Mason's in Abingdon. That's where I got this from. I completely forgot that this is tubular. <laughs> I was looking for the edge. I was like, where the heck is the edge? But it comes as one tubular piece of fabric. So we've got to make sure this is really flat. Oh, perfect. So once you've got it really flat, then you can go ahead and just start pinning the pattern on. going to grab my fabric scissors and start cutting that. I'm going to mark the centre of the sleeve. So we want to put the jersey good sides facing on the bodice and we're going to start by stitching the shoulder seams together, just using an overlocker. So I'm going to find my seams. Okay, so now I'm going to go and sew across those two seams. So all of the seams need to be sewn with an overlocker or using a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to start at the shoulder seam and I'm going to keep those bits really flat and then I'm going to sandwich it into the foot and I'm just going to start stitching and I'm going to keep stitching all the way until I reach the end and then I'm going to stop with the needles down in the fabric so I'm going to put the needles down I'm going to lift the foot up and then I'm going to flip this back on itself so that I can then stitch back all the way back to the other end. And this bit doesn't matter because we're going to encase that in the sleeve. But that's a way of making sure the overlocker or the overlocking doesn't come undone at one end so now it's nice and secure so let's do that on the other side and there we go seems still stretchy and it's nicely finished it's very hard to show you guys this properly <laughs> when it all just rolls into itself but this is where it's good to know the center front of that sleeve and we're going to match that up to the shoulder seam good side facing and then I match the end of the sleeve to the end of the opening and the bodice and then it's just a case of matching up these seams together So that's the sleeve pinned into place, it's quite hard to show you. <laughs> so now we're going to just go and sew that all the way along and we don't need to worry about encasing the ends on this bit. So we're just going to take it super slow and steady, not stretching any bits or trying to pull bits too much. sleeve in and now I'll just go and put the other one in 
Got the sleeve sewn in now and it's starting to look like a top. So now what you need to do is just put right sides of the bodice, or good sides of the bodice, facing. And we're literally just going to stitch all the way up the side and then all the way down the side of the sleeve. And we're going to back sew each time with the overlocker at each end so it doesn't come undone because I'm just going to leave this raw. Even though I hate pinning, <laughs> I am going to pin this into place because it's very easy to stretch out the shape. So you're actually going to want to start a little bit in from where you're going to be stitching the seam, not on the end. So we're going to go down and then back up. Stitch that little bit to the end and then put the needle down, flip it over and then we go and sew the rest of the seam. I'm nearing the end again, so I'm just going to go until the end and then put the needle down. So there we go, the needle's down, and then I'm just going to flip it the other way and stitch back down that stitch line. And there we go, a nice neat end with no tail and no unravelling. And here we go, that is the jersey top sewn together. Just turn it the right way around. And then on the raw edges, I'm just going to pull the seams so that it rolls up a bit. I think it looks quite nice on the neckline how it sort of rolls down like that. It's perfect! <laughs> and it's perfect length on the sleeves. I love this neckline. And you could do some really cool designs with this. You could do some like open seams so some of the overlocked seams are on the outside. And I like the way it rolls up a bit at the bottom which I thought I wouldn't like but I think because it matches the top it looks quite good so there we go a top made in a few hours day two of making jersey tops I'm very happy with the shape of this top that I made yesterday I tried it on again this morning and I decided that I want to try making a tank top I was doing some pinteresting and I saw some tops that were like long sleeves with a tank top and I thought that looked quite cool like that's very reminiscent of my childhood. So I'm gonna have a go at adding a binding to the edges. Hopefully it'll be all right. And I'm gonna refer back to the master pattern that we made and I'm gonna make some changes as to where I want it to scoop down to. So let's get back to the pattern. So this is the pattern we had yesterday and I'm just gonna use this to make the tank top pattern. So I'm just gonna lower the underarm because I don't need the tank top to go all the way into my underarm and then I'll also lower the front and at the shoulder seam I'm going to bring it in by 1.5 centimeters and then I think I want the strap to be about four centimeters so I will then join up these following a nice curved line. So I'll just curve that line there. And then curve line for the next line. And then I always square off the very front of the neckline. Because you don't want to have a funny point there. So the curve should go into a squared off line. And then I probably don't need the length to be as long. So I'll probably take some of the length off. Before I trace it off, I'm actually gonna change that neckline to be higher up. And then when I cut it, I'll then cut the front neckline so I don't have to cut two bits of pattern out. We have our tank top ready to cut out. And 
I'm going to fold this one in half, this top one, so that we can cut the neckline a bit different and a bit lower. I'm just going to pin it at the top so it doesn't keep rolling and I'm just going to draw that line for the lower neckline at the front and then I'm just going to cut that away. Now I'm going to go and attach the shoulder seams and the side seams and then I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to attempt to do this binding. Now I'm going to cut some strips that we can use for the facing, not facing, binding. Um, so. Okay, so I'm going to cut them to be two inches wide. Let's try this on one armhole before I get carried away. <laughs> cutting out things that might not even work. So I need to measure the length. So 18.5 inches. So I'm going to take an inch off. And so that's 17.5. So I'll just measure out 17.5. So I'm going to go and sew this good side spacing at the end so that we have a loop. Okay, and then I'm going to fold that over and I'm going to start pinning it into place. It's going to be quite tricky because it just loves to roll over on itself. And I'm just going to start pinning that around the armhole. I'm actually going to find a halfway point to this binding and put that halfway around the armhole because we're going to have to stretch it slightly but you want to stretch binding slightly apparently because then it helps hold the fabric. Okay, I'm going to go and attempt to stitch that. <laughs> It actually worked. <laughs> that was really not fun to sew, but it worked. Look at that. It's like an actual finished garment. <laughs> I'm quite glad I didn't make it in a final fabric because I don't love it on its own because it's a bit flesh toned. <laughs> I'll probably change the shape to be lower or higher. Um, I'm not sure, but I'm really surprised that that binding works so well and it sits really nice and flat. I'm going to try it on with the top I made yesterday, see how it looks with that. I'm not 100% sold on that idea, but I'm glad I did the experiment to see if I could do the binding. I think if I was to do it again I'd have it coming more up, straight up, rather than out like that. Definitely love this long sleeve, so I'm going to make some up in a final fabric. I think instead I'm going to make that long sleeve one that I got right the first time <laughs> in my other favourite fabrics so that I have those to just keep changing through and that's the style I like to wear the most anyway, so it makes sense to just make those. So let's do that. <laughs> very sweet. The only issue is it's not quite as sturdy of a stretch that it's sort of coming down a lot further whereas the other one sat up a bit more like this it sort of held its shape a bit more but this is a little bit less stretchy which I should have taken into consideration really but I could always add a fun little centre stitch but I think it's fine a little bit baggy. Also the raw edge of this is fine but it doesn't like roll up on itself so it really does look like a raw edge. 
but it's fine it's not like it's gonna fray or anything so I shall leave it like that I might make myself one more today in this brown stripe um, and if you want to see what it looks like then I will probably be posting a picture on my Instagram so you can head over there to have a look but I really hope you guys enjoyed this video it's fun doing something completely different to what I usually work with and something that I'm a beginner at in sewing there's so many things in sewing that I'd still be a beginner at but <laughs> this is one of the things that I had always been putting off and just never really wanted to do but I think this worked out pretty well and I'm excited to wear this top now it's very cozy I also lengthened the sleeves a little bit more from my first pattern that I did and I love it Gloria's decided that it's time for her to go on a walk so I'm going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any videos that you found really helpful for sewing jersey, then leave them in the comments down below and I will have a look. I hope you're all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>